I have the uh, DSO-152 and the DSO-153 in front of us here for a practical comparison. I'm not gonna get any of the heavy end of the specs and uh, all the technical details because I really don't care about that stuff, to be quite honest. I only care about the usability of a scope. Will it do what I need it to do, right? But somebody's gonna ask, so I'll tell you the difference, um, the major differences in these two uh, scopes. Uh, this is the 153, the sampling rate and the bandwidth, right? Five mega samples per second, bandwidth of uh, one meg, as you can see. This is a DSO 152, uh, one, sorry, 2.5 mega samples per second and a bandwidth of 200K. Right, that's it for the specs. That's all you're gonna get. Basically the rest of the stuff is the same. Everything is the same battery capacity wise and, uh, and the like. So you can see here, um, let me tell you a couple of things right off the hop that I don't like. I prefer the old display with respect to its display format. It's a wee bit brighter, as you might be able to see. Look at the graticules in the background, the grating. And um, it's a wee bit clearer. To me, uh, Finercy has pushed it a wee bit too far here with the measurements, on-screen measurements, which you can clear, of course, right? But check the size of the text there, man. Here's, here's a standard pencil with an eraser. Well, we're pushing our luck here, right? At least for my 57-year-old eyes, we're pushing our luck on that. But perhaps it's just a personal bitch. It's not that big a deal. I prefer this. It's much clearer to me. However, I do prefer the format of the display where it's on the lower portion of the display as opposed to the upper. Right. Those are no really important details. However, navigating is done by the same control wheel up top. And when you use it, it is much easier to see uh, what mode you're in. Yeah, it doesn't look great on video, but it's easy to tell you're on the time base here as far as your selection. Look at this. Is it obvious to you which selection I've actually currently got selected? No. Stupidly, they've got gray and blue with respect to the coloring. And there's only very subtle changes in the selection that you're actually in. So I don't like that, but then you, uh, uh, the 153 as opposed to the uh, 152. To me, that is a retrograde step. It, sometimes you go shake your head and you wonder what the engineers are thinking. What You don't want it easy to recognize what mode you're in? I do. Anyway, this is no here for a bitching session here, guys. This is here to tell you why I did buy this. Now, some of you guys will know, let me get this. This is actually clear, by the way. It's not gonna make any difference to the intensity of the display, but let me take it off, because somebody will say it will. <laughs> Why I'm actually making this video here, guys, is what is the difference between these two scopes? Now, you look at them, and you think, I've got them basically set up for the same mode of operation. A couple of obvious changes is there is a battery, battery capacity display, which is nice to have, so you know, you know how much run time, relatively speaking, you're gonna have. And you'll notice here, um, there's a small symbology here with respect to the symbol generator. This scope does in fact, sorry, no symbol generator, mixing my aviation terms with oscilloscope terms, um, signal generator, my apologies guys. There is two different modes to this. It's a two in one type rig, if you will. Uh, we have the basic oscilloscope mode, of course, which we're gonna consider here in just a second. And there's a signal generator, right? So you can go in and signal generator, and there's a number of different waveforms that you can actually select. Um, I, I don't really want to get into that, guys, um, for the simple reason um, there's other guys with all kinds of details that get an extensive review of this little scope. And that's no my point to the video here, to be quite honest. You can, you're welcome to go and watch that. I don't say that in a cheeky manner. I just say that because the, they've probably done a million times better job than I would anyway. I've got this selected in this particular format. It's a waveform with a bit of a unique um, uh, profile, let's see. The trace itself is a wee bit unique. It's not just a standard uh, pulse train or the like, and I've selected this one for a reason. Right, let's go back in the oscilloscope mode here. Sorry, still getting used to the wee bit different on the control. Uh, select. Okay, so I'm back in the scope mode here. So the symbol generator is generating that little pulse. Again, characteristic uh, center pulse, let's call it just for easy description. And I want to show you the main reason I bought this. The main reason I have this scope, again, it might not be obvious. That little icon right there, guys. 
the DSO 152 does not have the ability to alter the trigger with respect to the X axis. So you can see you can adjust the trigger up and down on the vertical plane, but there is no trigger on the X. There is a trigger, it's not adjustable, let me state that more accurately, there is, but it triggers right on the edge of the screen. That can be a problem if you're trying to view um, certain profile traces, like a fuel injector, for example. It's a very distinct asymmetrical waveform. It can become a problem when you want to view the thing in the center of the screen and you're only triggering on the edge. Let, again, let me put this little symbol generator here to use so you can see what I'm talking about. So again, doesn't it really matter what the parameters are on the, what I've actually set here, guys? It's just so we get an image. So I'm taking the output from the symbol generator and simply putting it in from the 153 and simply putting it in the 152 here, guys. Sorry, one second. And here it is. Can you see what I'm talking about here? There's no way I can get the center of that trace. Let me move the trigger down a wee bit here just so we hold a steady image. It does a good job of displaying it, right? Sorry guys, let me, there we go. Okay, just so we'll hold a steady image. So it does a good job of actually showing you the, uh, the trace, right? The waveform, and you can see it's triggering right on the edge there. Can you see my trigger is set? Again, on the, uh, the Y axis. Did I call it the Z axis earlier? I might have. <laughs> <laughs> the y-axis sorry guys my, my mistake if i did say that i might have the y-axis and the z and the, and the x-axis and the y-axis is it, the trigger is only adjustable on the y-axis there it's a fixed triggering point with respect to the x which is right at the edge of the screen here so yeah i can adjust the time base you know and maybe get an image that looks a wee bit better if you want to see it in extreme detail, again, it's triggering on the edge of the screen, right? And I'm gonna to have to go to this scaling, time base wise in order to capture a decent image that's close to the center of the screen. But again, you lose the resolution. If I scale right up, again, it's triggering right at the edge of the screen. I cannot get this to trigger at a point that I want. This is why I've purchased the 153. This may not seem like much of an issue, guys. It is, it's actually quite a serious oversight on the part of the 152, in my opinion, right? Okay, so this is what you pay your money for. This sc little scope is twice the money of the 152. I guess at the end of the day, you have to consider, are you going to be looking at unique asymmetrical waveforms where this becomes an issue for you? Or if, if you're just viewing a standard pulse train, it's not an issue. You know, the, this will not be an issue. But I use this for, you know, asymmetrical traces. And, and a good example is the fuel injector, right? So let me transfer because you can use the sig signal generator. And I'll just put this. This is already in scope mode here, guys. Let me just pop it over to the 153. So now the signal generator within 153 is actually driving the scope, right? We're in scope mode here. This is what I'm talking about, right? Because I have the trace I centralized on the screen, I can now maximize the degree of information that I can extract from this trace. That's the whole point of looking at a, a waveform on your scope so you can understand and appreciate is there an anomaly of some sort? Is there something amiss with the trace? To me, this is a huge deal, guys. I'm, I might sound like I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, and perhaps for some of you guys, I am. But to me, you must have the ability to alter the, uh, the trigger on the X axis. This only allows you to alter the trigger. The 152 only allows you to alter the trigger on the Y axis. This has the capacity to alter the trigger on the x-axis across. If you forget which one is which, guys, I just remember it with x as in across. It's easy to remember, right? X goes across the screen, y is on the vertical plane. Okay, so just so you appreciate what I'm talking about here. So I am uh, selected on the uh, x trigger there, guys, as far as adjusting it is concerned. 
you can see I can position this trace anywhere horizontally on screen, right? On the x-axis that I choose to do so, right? I cannot do this on the, uh, the 152 because there simply is no trigger on the uh, x-axis. So that is the major difference between the two, right? And again, let me just uh, change the time base here, just so you can let me change the time base. Uh, let me scale it right up. And again, it's centralized on the screen. I could not do that with a 152. I will put this thing through its paces with respect to um, practical application on the on a car, because that's mostly where I'm going to use this little scope. I think a good comparison with respect to its specifications being a wee bit better is does it make any real difference? I've showed you the uh, CAN bus on the car on the 152. It has its limitations, but you can see it. Again, keeping in mind they're only single channel scopes. You're only going to see the high or the low at any one time, or you can see a hybrid if you actually go across the two, uh, the two pins on the DLC. Uh, you can see a hybrid uh, of the two. But the main difference is the bandwidth and the sample rate on the 153 is considerably better. Can we see the CAN bus? Not much clearer. Can we see the fuel injector? Not much clearer. We're certainly going to be able to position the fuel injector trace in the central, centralized on the screen now so we can actually appreciate it. As opposed to, if you recall guys, I put this in the auto before. I let the trace walk across the screen and had to use the run stop mode in order to capture it in the position I was trying to do it. You can use that as a workaround. Is it practical? I guess somewhat. Is it great? No. Right, that's an initial look at the difference between the 152 and the 153, guys. Now keep in mind when I said this is twice the price, I'm talking about a $20, $20 US for the scope. So this one will cost you and then around the $40 US mark. Is it worth it for you? That's for you to decide. We'll take a look at the scope in a wee bit more detail uh, in the near future, guys. That's it, boys. Cheers.